Hello everyone. So today we talk about another Jamia paper about COVID-19 X-ray classification. This is called uh, FLANO. Stands for Focal Loss Based Neural Network Ensemble for COVID-19 Detection. It's a very recent J Jamia publication, and it's uh, done by Zhu Tiao, Austin Bay, Lucas Glass, Danny Xiao, and myself. So a quick summary of this work. This paper is focused on chest x-ray classification and the classes include uh, COVID-19 patients, pneumonia, uh, viral pneumonias, and bacteria pneumonia, and normal uh, healthy individuals. So four different classes and we used uh, over 5,580 chest x-ray images across 2,874 patients and here are some examples of those x-rays from this four different classes. And the method we're using is called uh, FLANO, stands for Focal Loss Based Neural Network Ensemble. It has uh, two important idea. One is this ensemble model that is trying to integrate multiple base models together into a combined model in order to improve the prediction accuracy. And we also incorporate a special loss called focal loss to handle the class imbalance. Here's the result uh, we're able to get. For, we're able to get the uh, on average precision of 0.78, recall of 0.86, F1 score of 0.81. So a quick introduction about this work and why we care about X-ray classification because X-ray is a very common first-line diagnosis of many diseases. And it's very commonly, uh, if there's some issues with the patient, uh, X-rays are taken. So we're interested to see, can we differentiate COVID cases from other diseases such as pneumonia, I mean, normal pneumonia, just based on chest X-ray images. And there are some challenges here. One is the sample size challenge because uh, this is done, uh, this study is done at the very early stage of the pandemic, and there aren't that many COVID examples out there. So the sample size of that class may be limited. And at the same time, because we have limited COVID cases, the class imbalance will be an uh, issue. So we have fewer COVID classes, but uh, uh, many other examples from the other classes. So what are the related work? Uh, there are three different related topics. One is the various of uh, convolution neural network models. And uh, you will see in the experiment section, we have incorporated a number of different architectures from uh, different CNN models. And the second line of related work is this different strategy to, uh, to construct an ensemble model. I start with simple averaging, to training a neural network, simple neural network, like a multi-layer perceptron model, and a specific way that uh, we will introduce in this work. And finally, how do we handle class imbalance? So a traditional method uh, for handling class imbalance include a resampling strategy. So just to uh, essentially repeat or duplicate the rare classes uh, maybe reduce the example from the majority class so that the, the, the class balance can be improved. And then we'll talk about this kind of a designing a special loss to handle that. And that has been introduced uh, in the literature as well. And that's what we use here, the focal loss. So next, let's talk about the data that we're using in this study. We s include two different data sets. One is this uh, COVID chest x-ray data set, and the links are here, and I'll provide the link in the description below. And um, this, uh, this is COVID x-ray data set. Then we also have a, a CACO chest x-ray image data set that has many uh, other classes of images, but no COVID classes. And here's the kind of a uh, distribution of these different classes, and you can see that uh, across different uh, classes. I mean, COVID data only have an 119 examples, majority of them, like 100 of them are COVID example, then with a few other examples. And then the other data set, this uh, Kaggle data set, have uh, five, over 5,389 examples and all coming from other classes.
And there's different view of taking uh, HS X-ray, either from the front to the back, uh, and, or from the back to the front. And you can see majority of is coming from this AP view, so it's more and more common. And for the PA view, uh, we did some pre-processing by, by flipping them so that uh, they can be more uh, similar uh, as the AP view. So we can uh, do this classification directly. Mo I mean, since most of the data uh, example are coming from the AP view. And then for the training test split, uh, we take 80% of the example of training and the remaining 20 as testing, but we do it in a cross-validation fashion, a, a five-fold cross-validation. And then the final performance or average performance across this five different uh, test set. Okay, so that's the data. So what about the method? So method has uh, kind of two uh, stage. One is this base model. So those are all uh, different CNN models with different architecture, such as Inception 3, uh, VGG, and REST Next uh, 101, REST Net uh, 152, and DenseNet. And so this, each of the space model will make a four prediction. I mean, like a probability score for each of the four classes. And then, uh, then stage two, we're trying to combine them, right? This is how the ensemble is happening. We want to learn a proper weight for all this prediction scores. The way we did this is we have a neural weight uh, module and that essentially will output, since we have this five different base classes, we'll output a five different weights, uh, one for each of the base model, and then their prediction will be weighted based on the, the output weights that produced by this neural weight module. And finally, the prediction, which is again, this four different classes, will be compared against the, the real label, which is a kind of a one hot uh, encoding, right? One of the four classes will be one, the other will be zero. Uh, that's the ground truth. And we'll compare with the prediction, will be some kind of a probability scores across these four classes. And the loss function we're using is this focal loss. I'll talk about the focal loss next in the next slide. But here, let's look at the neural weight module a little bit closer. So here, uh, instead of just assigning equal weight or learning a simple uh, neural network, which are the baselines uh, we, we actually use. Here we use a very uh, specific design that turns out works pretty well. And first step is we concatenate all these predictions into a long vectors, right? Uh, this is five times four 20 dimensional vector. We call that F. And then we actually then do an outer product over F. So instead of having a 20 dimension here, with outer product, we'll get a, a 20 times 20, 400 dimensions. That's, uh, that's this uh, vector over here. After outer product, then flatten that matrix into a long vector of 400 dimension, then pass through a, a, a dense neural network layer, then pass through another 10H uh, activation function. That finally give us uh, this learner's weight. So the weight, uh, it's coming, uh, it's range from negative one to one. So it's possible to actually assign some negative weight for the prediction if the base classifiers are not performed very well. Uh, so we just want to give the flexibility for the learners uh, to assign the proper weight. So that's the neural weight module. Okay, so that's the, the, the ensemble model. We first learn a model for the base classifier, then kind of learn the right uh, weights for each base classifier. By the way, for all this the CNN model, we're actually using a, a pre-trained model that trained in uh, image, uh, I believe is ImageNet dataset, and but fine-tuned on this 5,000 uh, image, uh, X-ray images, because uh, if we train those classification model, a very, very complex CNN model, completely from scratch on just 5,000 images may not be sufficient. So we have a, a kind of pre-trained model to start each of those uh, model, then fine tune them on the 5,000 examples we have uh, from X-ray images. So let's look at the, the loss function. And uh, as I said, we use the focal loss, but before we get to the focal loss, let's first understand the standard cross entropy loss, right? So it's, uh, standard cross entropy loss is in this form, right? If you have M classes, so in this case, M equal to four, we have this, for each class, we have this term minus YM, that's the, the ground truth label. Uh, so it, it will be either zero or one, and times log of YM hat, that's the prediction on these classes. So here's a little bit of intuition, right? Only one of this uh, M classes will have values and the others will be zero, right? For, for example, 
maybe m1, m equal to 1, uh, that's y1 is 1. So in that case, um, so the intuition is if this y, uh, y1 hat is close to 1, then the second term will be close to 0. So that will give us a very small loss term, which is good. And if this uh, y uh, hat or y1 hat is close to 0, then it means this log of zero is very large number, negative number. Uh, uh, sorry, a very small negative number. And then negative that will give a very large positive loss. So that's bad. That's uh, what a cross entropy loss is trying to do. But it gives equal weights for each class. That's what we want to avoid when we have a very imbalanced class. Because at the rare class, you may want to give a higher weight. That's where we introduce this focal loss. And the focal loss has a, a little bit more complicated terms. Uh, still, uh, we kind of uh, designed this one for each class, have this uh, very uh, special expression. You still have a similar to the cross entropy term, but it has a two additional terms. Right? The first term, this alpha term, is the weight, a high, high parameter you can set for each class. So the intuition is you can set a higher weight for a poorly classified class or some class you think are important, right? Maybe COVID class is very important, so you assign a higher weight there. And then the second uh, modification is this term, one minus y hat uh, to the gamma's uh, power. So this the intuition here is if y hat is close to, close to one, right? If this is a ground truth label, it's also one, then this term, if it's close to zero, then that means that's easy class, right? So, and in that case, maybe you want to downweight that uh, well classified class. So that's this term is trying to do by setting a, a appropriate gamma. And you can imagine if we set this alpha uh, m to be one, and this gamma equal to zero, then this become uh, this degenerate case, right? It become cross entropy loss again. But by setting a different alpha and different gamma, and then uh, we can get a, a, a different weight on different classes, especially when we have a rare classes, and this turns to work better. So that's the focal loss. So next, let's look at the, the performance of the, uh, all these different models. And here's a more detailed view of all the experiments. And you can see that each line is a model. Right here are some base model and each column is uh, performance on each class in terms of f1 score and then the macro uh, f1 which is averaging of uh, this four and then we have some additional baseline that's a uh, kind of designed specifically for covid classification you can see their performance and then this all different ensemble method right these are simple ensemble right just simple averaging which is called voting or ensemble with a uh, uh, simple uh, multi-linear perceptual model right and with L1 regularization or with L2, you can see the performance. Uh, and then some variation of flannel, uh, flannel model. You can see the difference is pretty big. Right? I mean, first of all, um, this ensemble has to be carefully designed. Right? Otherwise, uh, it won't work as well. And then um, we also have some different variation of here. Right? Some are both uh, without the focal loss. Right? You can see the performance drops by three percentage point. And then, uh, Still, instead of using focal loss, we're just doing some resampling, right? Sample the uh, rare classes more and downsample the, the majority class, right? That's a, uh, it doesn't do much, right? But the, the particular design we have for flannel uh, actually performed the best. If you look at just average performance and across different iteration, you can see that the, the variances for the base model is actually quite big. That means uh, the ensemble is necessary. Right? You can see that the, the blue, the green bar is the, Flannel, flannel model has the least uh, amount of variation, so it's much more stable. Not only on average they perform better, but also it's more stable, so that their, their prediction is more robust. Comparing to the base model, have a pretty big uh, variance, and also some of the kind of other baseline model uh, like COVID net, AI COVID, and uh, simple ensemble method. So okay, that's it. Uh, this is uh, the flannel paper for COVID-19 detection. It's about uh, chest x-ray classification for COVID against many different other classes. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, this paper. Thank you very much.